A simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank Part 77, fitting the boiler cladding. This job is not easy. The job would be a lot easier if I had some bending rollers that would accommodate something this size, but unfortunately my bending rollers are far too small. And as you're watching me do this job, you will see now how important it was to remove the sharp edges from the piece of brass sheet. The first stage is to make the cladding wrap around the boiler, then find some method of temporarily holding it in place while you make the boiler bands that will permanently hold it in place. Initially, I find it easier to use masking tape like this, just wound round several times. And each time you wind the masking tape around the boiler, you press the cladding more tightly to the barrel. Eventually, I will use a secondary method which is much better, but it's quite difficult to implement if you don't do this first. At this early stage, I feel that I have to mention the problems that can occur when doing this job. Make sure that the workbench is totally clear. If you accidentally place the boiler on the bench on top of something like a screwdriver, a pair of pliers, or even a small nut or bolt, you will damage the cladding and then you have a problem. So before starting, make certain that the bench is completely clear. This bottom part of the cladding overlaps slightly and as you can see I cannot put enough pressure on using masking tape. I thought it was a good idea to enlist the help of the original boiler pans, but when I put them in place they were far too big. The previous boiler must have been different to this one. Or maybe the previous builder used thicker heat insulation, I don't know, but it's far too slack. I think the best thing to do with this boiler banding is consign it to the bin. Now I need to make the first boiler band. And I do this by wrapping a piece of 5 16 of an inch wide boiler banding around the barrel. And then I drill two holes, one at each end of the banding, and bend the end at right angles. Until the band looks like this. The size of bolt that I'm using is 6BA. And here you see the principle. I wrap the boiler band around the cladding, and using a screwdriver and a spanner, I tighten the nut and bolt. As you can clearly see, this first boiler band is far too big. And even when the ends of it are held very close together with the nut and bolt, it's still a rattle fit. The problem is that the end of the cladding sheet is very springy and sticks out too far. And that's why I managed to get the wrong measurement for the length of the boiler band. It was not a big problem. I chopped off one end of the boiler band, redrilled it and bent it over, and now it's a good fit. It's time to make boiler band number two. For the rest of the bands, I think I'll use my ruler and cut them to 16 and 1 16th of an inch. Once I made the first boiler band that fitted perfectly, I thought it would be a good idea to use these. They are nylon cable ties. One was insufficient, but when I put two together, there was sufficient length to allow me to wrap it round the cladding and still have enough to get hold of to pull it tight. I ended up fitting quite a few of these tie wraps. It will make fitting the boiler bands a whole lot easier. When the cladding was springy and I closed the ends of the boiler bands to put the bolt through, it really was difficult holding it there while I put the nut in place on the bolt, but now it's really simple. Yet another health and safety warning, if you're using these cable tie things, chop the ends off, but always use one of these side cutters which has a flat surface so the ends aren't sharp. This one's seen better days and I've sharpened it a few times, but it cuts okay. A quick word about making these boiler bands. Try and think it through. The first boiler band is going to be used as a template for the rest, and that is assuming that you're cladding a parallel boiler, not a tapered one. Ideally, the bands need to be at the correct tension when the gap is closed completely. To be honest, I don't always get this right, but in this case I did. Knowing where to put the bands is another matter. I think I'm not going to have quite enough to make every band, so I'll have to compromise to start with. It's time now to cut another one of the cable ties, before finally tightening up boiler band number three. When cutting the cable ties, take great care that they do not lash you in the face, because the ends can be quite sharp. In this clip I'm trying the steam dome in place, and it's not bad, it's fairly close, but it's not going down quite far enough to seat on the cladding. Never mind, I'll look into this shortly. 
Here I'm finally tightening all of the boiler bands and as you can see the brass needs to close up fully otherwise it would just bend. As I'm voicing over this video and watching the replay I can see that I do need to tighten the boiler bands slightly more. But for now it's time to cut the last of the cable ties from around the barrel. There is something that I need to mention. There's a lot of masking tape still around the firebox. I will need to cut this off but not just yet. Some viewers may be thinking why have I left the cladding so short on the firebox? Well I've done this for a reason. This boiler only just fits in between the frames. With the original blowdown bushes in place it wouldn't even fit in between the frames. I had to grind the tops of those away. I've shortened the cladding around the firebox to make it easier to fit the boiler into the frames. And if you've been watching this series don't forget there's nothing really holding the boiler down onto the frames other than maybe the blowdown valves. A viewer asked me what the marker pen was that I used. You can buy them via eBay. Here is a close up. A friend of mine sent me a couple of these originally and I've just bought two more. Now the boiler's sat in the frames, I'm going to cut the last two cable ties. And this is how I'm going to hold the boiler into the frames. These two small brass plates, made from the same material as the cladding, are a tight fit at either side. I'm going to drill some holes in the frames. I'll use countersunk bolts from the inside, with nuts on the outside to secure the plates onto the frames. Then I will very carefully drill the plates and cladding at the top, Thread the cladding something like 8BA, which is a very fine thread, and attach the two plates to the cladding at each side, which will hold the boiler firmly to the frames. The next job is to do something about this steam dome that is not sitting down properly onto the cladding. Maybe my inner steam dome is a bit too long, or maybe it's because inside the steam dome the top part of it has not been machined. The easiest way out of this is just to clean up the inside of the steam dome. And for this job I'm going to use my very brutal diamond cutter, which easily removes quite a lot of the gunmetal very quickly. I'm taking great care not to push it all the way through the dome. Once I'd removed sufficient material which is now on the bench, the steam dome was a good fit onto the cladding. And once again I used my very useful deep hole marker pen to make a mark on top of the inner steam dome. The hole doesn't look like it's in the middle but it's near enough for rock and roll. The main thing is it matches the position of the hole in the steam dome. The next part of the job involves drilling a hole in the top of the steam dome. It's quite a shallow hole, I don't want to go all the way through. And the hole was tapping size for 6BA and here I'm tapping the hole. This is a plug tap or bottoming tap. The camera angle makes both the drilling and tapping of this hole look a little bit like it's going crooked, but it's not. For this job I'm using a special tap that I shortened a long while ago. It's less likely to snap off because it's shorter, and it's also very useful when I'm tapping holes for studs because it can only go so far in. All I need now to fit the outer dome cover onto the inner steam dome is a small bolt. The steam dome cover was secured to the original old boiler using a small countersunk screw. I thought that a dome head screw would look a bit better, but that's just my personal preference. Whichever type of fixing you use, the thing that matters is that the outer steam dome is pushed down onto the cladding. I think in this clip I've got the dome the wrong way around, it's a better fit in one direction than the other. The time has come to loosely fit the running boards in place to get an idea what the locomotive is going to look like. There is however a bit of a problem, the snifting valve fouls the dummy steam pipe cover. I will need to rectify this and besides when I steamed the engine the snifting valve dribbled. I think I'm going to mount it somewhere else so it can dribble through the bottom of the smoke box. And another bonus is I will be able to show you how I permanently plug the unwanted 3 8 of an inch diameter hole in the side of the smoke box. Both of the steam pipes from the running boards and the rods are just dummies, they don't even touch the smoke box because if they did the paintwork on the smoke box would be marked over time. This is episode 77 and it really shows how much this engine has changed since episode 1.
There's still a bit of a way to go yet, and it's all fiddly stuff. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.